I'm John Gorey at the University of Iowa, and this is the first of seven short videos based on a colloquium talk entitled The Flipping Method of Teaching Physics and Other Technical Subjects. The intended viewers for these videos are instructors in physics, chemistry, astronomy, engineering, and similar technical topics. Let's start off by asking yourself, do you ever teach a course by writing on a chalkboard or a whiteboard? Or perhaps, do you sometimes teach by showing slides, like PowerPoint slides or PDF slides? Well, if you've answered yes to either of these two questions, this talk is for you. I'm going to tell you about how to make a transition from this type of traditional teaching to the paradigm of the flipped classroom. Let's also ask yourself, do you sometimes feel that you just don't have enough time? Not enough time because there's too much material to cover. So you don't have enough time to do enough review or enough examples, and you don't have enough time to do a lot of discussion either. Well, if you answered yes to any of these questions, then once again, this talk is intended for you. The flipped classroom that I'm going to be explaining in these seven short videos is intended to solve these problems. It creates a lot of time that you can use for exactly these purposes. A traditional lecture is taught in a hall like this. This is the room where I had freshman physics, and this was my freshman physics professor, Ricardo Gomez at Caltech. Ricardo held his lecture notes, and he copied them onto the blackboard. Students copied them into their notebooks. That's how it looked 40 years ago in a traditional lecture. It probably looked exactly the same way 40 years earlier in 1935. And today, it still looks the same way, except that there's only one obvious difference in this photo in 1975 as compared to today. And that, of course, is that in 1975, none of the students were looking down at their cell phones. Oh, you might be thinking there is one other difference. The cat. That was Duchess. Duchess was a 200-pound mountain lion. She belonged to the student in the second row in the aisle seat, and Duchess came to class with him that day. So in the flipping paradigm, we're going to move away from the traditional sequence of events that the student prepares before the class by reading, attends a lecture where she sits passively, perhaps copying notes into a lecture notebook, and then after class does homework problems. For a technical subject like physics, the homework problems themselves are often the central part of the learning experience. That's the traditional paradigm. In the flipped classroom paradigm, before the class, the student watches the lecture as a sequence of short videos, which she can view on a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop computer. That frees up time during the class for other kinds of activities, activities that may be more engaging for the students. Afterwards, you can still have exactly the same homework problems that you had before. That's how the flipped classroom works for me in a technical subject such as physics. So the term flipping comes about from an exchange of two activities, most importantly, moving the passive lecture from the class time to the before class preparation period. And this is made possible by lecture capture software, which I'm going to be showing you in this series of seven videos. Now, when I talk to instructors who have never before heard about flipping, they'll always ask me two questions. What is it? And doesn't it take a lot of time? Well, the answer to the first question is that flipping is, to me, a use of a series of short videos to replace lectures, and this frees up time in the class that can be used for other purposes like discussion, examples, and demonstrations that engage the student more. Instructors will ask, doesn't it take a lot of time? Because instructors are busy people, and they've already invested a lot of effort into preparing lecture notes that they want to just keep on using. I want to point out that there is an easy way to migrate from the traditional lecture to the flipped classroom. And that's the point of this series of seven videos, finding an easy way to make this migration. You can start off by using the same raw material. You can keep using your old PowerPoint slides or your old handwritten notes. You can still continue to teach in the same classroom. One thing that you'll have to have that's new is that you'll have to host some files on a website and a very common way of doing that would be a teaching platform such as Blackboard that your university probably already has. It's possible to flip a classroom entirely, or you could just partially flip a classroom rather than replacing the entire lecture. I would encourage beginners to start off with 
partial flipping. That's what I did. The first class that I used flipping, I just partially flipped the class. The second class, then I fully flipped it. There are many ways to do flipping, and I'm going to describe only one approach. This approach is not a radical change in teaching as compared to traditional lecturing. That means that if your traditional lectures work well now, this is also sure to work. The approach that I'm going to describe is also not an intense, time-pressured experience for students, and so this helps improve student satisfaction. The videos themselves will be the central point of most of my presentations in this colloquium talk, but I want to emphasize that the videos are really not the main purpose. The videos merely free up time so that you can use class time for some other purpose. The reason that I'm going to emphasize the videos in this colloquium talk is simply that they are going to be the most unfamiliar part of the experience for most instructors. And we're going to start off this with the second video in this series where I'm going to show you three examples of videos.